So this is this spooky action at a distance. And it, I mean, I just got shivers right now thinking about it. The, the non-locality is key. So there are, there are some experiments you can do. And, and when Einstein coined this phrase, spooky action at a distance, he actually wrote a paper talking about uh, a, a, another quantum phenomenon, entanglement, where two different particles can have these completely fuzzy properties, so, so fundamentally undefined properties, but, be, but nonetheless be correlated with each other. So the, their reality exists in some correlation between them, not in, in the, the, the particles themselves. At least that is as predicted by standard quantum mechanics. And Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen showed that if that's true, then you can take these two so-called entangled particles very far apart, light years, it doesn't matter. Someone could make a measurement on one particle and literally, literally the way they choose to make that measurement, so the type of measurement they choose to make, causes a real physical change in the other particle. The other particle becomes defined in a way that it wasn't before. And so this is this spooky action at a distance and it, I mean, I just got shivers right now thinking about it. it, it it's weird as hell. Anyway, it, we, we've now demonstrated that exactly this, you know, reductio ad absurdum that Einstein proposed to, to, to discount the idea of, of that standard quantum mechanics has proved to be real. We've done these tests. Uh, and th these are called Bell tests and, and they, require, they, they show that the universe, or as is usually said, they show that the universe can't have what we call local realism, okay? The, the two particles that you're separating can't independently know what their own state is. The state can't be encoded within that particle. It has to be, according to the normal interpretation of this, that has to be some, somehow distributed so that, so that the, the, the resolution is able to move faster than the speed of light between these particles. Now, um, so, th so these particles are separated. Uh, let's say their correlation is that one has to have a spin that's pointing up, the other has to have a spin that's pointing down, but you don't know which is which. And you don't know which way the spin is pointing. Uh, left, right, up, down, forwards, back. When someone chooses to make, uh, Alice chooses to make an uh, a measurement, the choice of direction that she chooses, left, right, up, down, influences what Bob on the other side is going to be able to see from his, from his particle. Now, the spooky action at a distance is if that, that interaction happened instantaneously, but a hidden variable interpretation would say that this particle really knew what it was all along, right? And this particle really knew what it was all along. And it's just that we didn't know. And so the, the indeterminacy it represents our lack of knowledge, not the particle's actual state. However, when you look, when you do this experiment and you look at the correlations, it, it really seems like the, the, the choice of measurement affects both particles. My understanding of a super deterministic theory is that these particles have correlated spins, but because the observer on both ends is also part of the universe, their choice of measurement is also correlated with those hidden variables inside the, the, those particles. And so the, the person thought they were choosing measure up, down, measure left, right, but really they're all part of a universe that is going to give you the right answer uh, and you actually didn't have a, so much choice about which direction you chose to measure those particles. How badly did I mangle that? To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. With a free trial, you can enjoy the full talk and thousands more. Thank you for being part of the conversation.